Yeah, so um, in the next 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to talk about auto scaling Apache Flink and some improvements that we did in uh, recent versions of Flink. Apache Flink is a open source um, stream processing engine for distributed data processing. It has been started out of um, a university research project from some universities in the Berlin area. Um, and we um, donated the project to the Apache Software Foundation in 2014. And since then it has grown to one of the most active and popular projects in the foundation. It has evolved um, yeah, to a very large stream processing framework with, with many features. Um, I've done this with um, together with Viverica. So Viverica is a company that um, the creators of Apache Flink have started to uh, provide products around Apache Flink and professional services. And this company has been acquired in 2018 by Alibaba Group, um, one of the largest users and um, contributors to the Apache Flink project. And we continue to work on the Flink project um, to add more features to it under the Alibaba umbrella. A very brief introduction into Apache Flink. Um, the website says it's a um, it's stateful computations over data streams. That's a very abstract definition. Um, and maybe it's abstract because the engine is very versatile and supports a lot of different use cases and scenarios. Um, you can see that the engine supports all kinds of data sources uh, like databases, files, or message bus systems like Kafka, Kinesis, Google PubSub, and so on. It also supports writing to all these systems. And it supports three main categories of use cases. The most prominent one is um, stateful stream processing, where we provide um, basic primitives like streams, state, and time to the user to express their um, use case. We also provide higher level abstractions um, like for, for streaming analytics and machine learning. The most prominent abstraction here is the SQL interface. So you can write, um, it's a normal standard SQL on both batch and streaming workloads, and it will be executed in a distributed manner um, on the Flink cluster. And the latest addition to Flink is event-driven applications through the Stateful Functions API that is basically like an actor model on top of Flink that allows you to send messages back and forth in a much more generic way. So it's not about analytics, it's much more about general purpose application development like you would do with Spring or, Spring or other frameworks. But this talk is going to focus more on the lower level stuff around the Flink runtime. So everything I talk about today is um, supported through all the abstractions of Flink. So why would you want to scale a data processor like Flink? The main motivation is that you want efficient resource utilization. You want to reduce your costs. You want to reduce your energy consumption. And um, you don't want to waste resources, basically. And um, in particular, for a stream processing framework, the workload is often changing over the day or um, seasonally or by popularity of your service or website or whether when you're running promotions or so. Um, so imagine, for example, Alibaba, which is hosting the largest shopping festival on Earth once a year. Um, of course, there's a big um, spike in load at that time. But you don't want to have a cluster running at max capacity all the time. So on the left-hand side, I've illustrated how it would look um, if you have a fixed number of workers running all the time. And if you want to guarantee a certain SLA, you have to set the number to the highest possible load, basically, to be able to serve these requests or to serve these incoming events. But of course, all this um, area here between the um, black line and the red line is uh, wasted, are wasted resources. With elastic resource allocation, you can try to match the required number of uh, resources much more closely by much more closely following um, the load of the system by scaling up and down the number of workers that you're using. And there are different approaches how to scale Apache Flink um, applications. 
The first approach is manually scaling through a safe point. The second approach, approach is reactive scaling. And the third approach is auto scaling. So the traditional approach that has been supported basically since forever in Flink is um, using a safe point. So you have your cluster running and you notice that it um, needs to be scaled up. So you take a safe point and stop the cluster. And the safe point is basically a copy of all the state that your operators have in the cluster to some big persistent storage that is reliable, let's say S3, Google uh, Storage, or HDFS. And once you brought up a new cluster, um, you can restore your Flink application uh, to this larger cluster. So basically, since we added support for um, restoring state to larger clusters, like to change the number of uh, operators, the parallelism of operators in Flink, um, we supported rescaling uh, using this manual approach. The advantage of this approach is that it's very customizable. So you can um, deploy custom scenarios like adding machines to a cluster before taking the save point so that they are preloaded already um, or migrating your application to an entirely different uh, infrastructure. Like all these scenarios are possible with uh, this approach. And it's also supported in all Flink versions. It's supported with all schedulers, with all modes that are available in Flink. But there is, of course, a few obvious disadvantages. The biggest one is that it requires a lot of custom tooling. Um, just imagine what happens if stopping uh, the cluster fails for some reason, or you're not sure whether the save point has been created, um, stuff like that, or if, if, the, if the new cluster doesn't come up properly. For all these scenarios, you need to have custom error handling logic. Um, and this approach obviously can lead to a lot of downtime, or it's very difficult to implement in a way that it doesn't cause a lot of downtime. And also, somehow, it doesn't make sense that everybody reinvents the wheel over and over again with um, yeah, various degrees of perfection. I think it's better if Flink itself provides a good solution for scaling. And this is what we've introduced in Flink 1.13. Uh, we call it reactive scaling. So now you have this cluster running that needs to be scaled up. And instead of stopping and starting it, you just add new resources to the cluster. And the application will automatically scale up. So you have your Flink topology running with a certain um, number of parallel instances of your operators. As soon as you add more machines to your cluster, it will notice these additional machines and increase the parallelism of your operators and then um, execute your job on more machines. The advantage is that you can operate Flink like a stateless application. Um, this is quite nice um, because basically you can treat Flink like any other um, stateless uh, application, like some Nginx caching servers uh, that you can just scale up and down if your website gets more popular. And you can do the same now with Flink, even though it provides exactly once guarantees. And um, yeah, it sometimes it's very critical to your uh, like to the correctness of your of your overall applications. You can also use existing infrastructures such as auto scaling groups in AWS or horizontal pod auto scalers in Kubernetes. These pod auto scalers in Kubernetes are available by default. They just monitor the CPU usage of a certain deployment and um, then adjust the replica factor of your deployment automatically. So it's very, very easy uh, to set up Flink on Kubernetes with auto scaling. One disadvantage of reactive scaling is that the scaling events come by surprise for Flink. So because an outside system decides when to scale up or scale down, in particular, on a scale down event, we are just killing a machine randomly. And if a long time has passed since the last checkpoint has been created, on restore, we'll have to do a lot of reprocessing because a lot of time, um, like a lot of reprocess, like a lot of processing needs to be done again. And um, the auto scaling, the reactive scaling mode is not supported yet by all the deployments. 
It's currently only supported in standalone and Kubernetes and Docker. And the third approach is auto-scaling that I will describe by comparing it to reactive scaling. So in reactive scaling, Flink is basically in a mode where it always uses as many resources as possible. As soon as, it, as you give it more resources, it will just grab them and deploy your application on it. So the scaling decision is done outside of Flink. With auto-scaling, Flink decides on the resources it needs, and it also decides when to scale. So this is solving the problem that I just described, that the scaling event might come by surprise. And you can imagine optimizations where Flink is only triggering a scaling event right after a checkpoint has been completed successfully, so that it's very cheap to uh, change the parallelism of your application. So in summary, auto-scaling is where Flink is doing the scaling decision by itself. And it just talks to the outside resource provider like Kubernetes or Yarn uh, to tell it what it needs. <clears throat> so to summarize the previous slides, this manual scaling approach has been available since forever. The reactive scaling approach has been released in Flink 113 that has been published in May. And auto scaling is not yet available, but it's fairly easy to implement. And I'm pretty sure we will have it uh, fairly soon in Flink. I also wrote a full blog post where I demonstrate what I just described, um, meaning that this approach of deploying Flink on Kubernetes and using horizontal pod autoscalers. So all the Kubernetes uh, resource definitions are in this blog post. And I would just like to share the result of this blog post. Um, basically, I have a job that produces a lot of load on the, on the CPU cores, and I adjust the throughput over time. So on the upper right-hand side, you see the throughput over time of events, and it's just following a sine curve. So it's just going up and down all the time, the throughput. And on the lower left-hand side, you see how this uh, CPU load is going up and down following the input throughput that we have. And the result, the positive result, is that you can see the number of task managers here is nicely going up and down. So here, the number uh, at the bottom is basically 1. And then it goes up, up to 5. And then it slowly goes down again. And so this is a fairly simple experiment, but it worked already quite nicely. It was just based on the CPU metric. In a more advanced scenario, you would probably monitor other metrics as well, like the Kafka consumer leg, which indicates how much data is still unprocessed. Or maybe you would also use um, the latency, for example, in your pipeline as a metric to decide how to scale up. And finally, I would like to quickly talk about the implementation of this feature. We needed to add two prerequisite features for adding this. One is called declarative resource management. It's a feature that allows you to, like internally in Flink, allows us to um, reason differently about reason differently about the required resources. Um, so that the internal scheduler component tells the, the resource manager how much resources it desires. And then the resource manager is trying to fulfill this. Um, desire and then notifies the scheduler about the resources that are actually available. And we implemented a new scheduler in Flink. The scheduler component in Flink is responsible for deciding how to spread the work across the workers in the cluster. We call them task managers. And um, the we implemented a new scheduler that is basically telling the new declarative resource manager um, how much resources it desires. And then the resource, uh, the resource manager tells the cluster uh, the scheduler how many resources are actually available. In case of reactive mode, we tell the declarative resource manager that we want infinitive resources. And then the resource manager always tells us how many machines are actually available. And as soon as we add new machines, 
the resource manager will notice this and will notify the scheduler. The scheduler will then compute a new distributed execution graph for Flink with a higher or lower parallelism and then start executing uh, accordingly. And from this, you can actually see that it's not that difficult to implement also an auto scaling mode because then instead of requesting infinite resources, we would request resources that we actually need. And if you're then working with an active resource manager like Kubernetes or Jan, we would request the number of needed machines and then um, schedule the job based on the amount of machines that were made available to us. And that's actually it. Um, I would also like to mention that we are currently hiring. Um, and if you're interested in working on problems like I just described or working on open source technology or very interesting products that we are building, then please um, go to our website or reach out to me. And now I'm happy to take questions from you. Yeah, thanks, Robert, for this uh, for this uh, awesome talk. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, uh, really really nice features uh, that have been added to Flink and are being added. Um, well, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that the uh, that the um, like uh, auto scaling mode um, is, is currently being worked on. And it's been uh, integrated into Flink. Um, so, what would give me that? Uh, over like a very clever uh, external auto scaling component that would, for instance, um, as as you said, monitor CPU usage, maybe also talk to Flink via the REST API to figure out when the last save point was taken, and um, what what would be the advantages of like having that like really built into Flink? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, so one limitation of directive mode is that it only works with basically the standalone deployment of Flink right now. So this means that you have to manually deploy Flink on Kubernetes right now. And um, with, with the support for auto-scaling, we would be able to use what we call Active Resource Manager in Flink. And the Active Resource Manager in Kubernetes, for example, is just deploying one pod to Kubernetes. And then it's waiting for jobs to be submitted. And then it allocates um, workers or task managers as needed. So I would say this is a little bit more elegant. Um, so this is one benefit that you can use the more elegant version of the Kubernetes deployment. The second benefit is that you um, probably will expose um, different ways of auto scaling Flink. One thing I can imagine is that we would expose a programmatic API where you basically implement a little Java module that decides based on various factors how to scale. So right now, the scaling decision, like how, like how to scale individual operators, is fairly basic in Flink. So maybe sometimes it might not make sense to scale up a source if the source is not a bottleneck. Maybe you need to only scale up certain <clears throat> types of operators because those are um, yeah slow or need more resources. Um, and with a auto scaling implementation or some logic that is in Flink that decides how to set up um, parallelism for individual operators, we can make this more efficient. Yeah, uh, th yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, like uh, knowing about the topology of the job and then being able to um, just scale individual operators. That yeah, uh, yeah, as I said, makes a lot of sense. I mean, technically, so, you can do this also with reactive mode. If you have some module that basically gets an in, as an input the current parallelism of the operators and then as an output the new parallelism of the operators, um, 